Good morning, Riverside United Church. I'm interrupting all of your conversations this morning as we begin worship, but I love that because it means you're talking to one another and you're not strangers in this place, and hopefully you like one another a little bit as well some days. Um, so welcome to worship today. Just a, a quick kind of announcement, and it's less of an announcement and more of a, if you're missing like a black wallet slash purse and a cell phone case, my kids and I found one out in the church parking lot just on the other side of the Edith Cavell school there. Um, it's empty though, so somebody's missing a cell phone and the purse stuff was completely emptied and there's a pair of shoes as well. So if you know of anybody missing any, like a cell phone case or a pair of shoes or like a black kind of purse thing, um, they're in the parking lot. I left them there, but I might grab them and uh, post a picture on the Riverside Bulletin Board just to see if anybody's missing that stuff. Unfortunately, I think it's all empty, so either they took it out and left the stuff there or somebody else took it out, which is the more likely option, um, and then they left the stuff there. Um, so if you're missing anything, I hope that you find it, um, or if you know anybody that does, let me know, and we can at least return the empty cell phone case to them and uh, figure out, there's a mystery, my kids said. There's a mystery we have to solve this morning, Daddy. <laughs> a mystery indeed. But So last week was, I think, a great worship service, and I have to say, in the midst of that worship service, and even after the fact, there's a lot of feedback last week, and I love that. So the more feedback I get, from you in the flesh, the better, in my opinion, because that means I know that you're listening. It means that I know, okay, they like this. Keep going on this. Or if they start booing or throwing fruit, okay, maybe go off of that. No throwing pineapples, though we don't have one of those this week. That would hurt a little bit. Uh, but yeah, feel free during worship to clap, to laugh, to shout out some joyful amens or anything like that. I mean, this isn't a movie theater. This isn't an event where you have to sit quietly and be worried about saying something or coughing at the wrong time. It's not a somber event, and it's, it's an exciting Sunday morning. It's a beautiful, wonderful Sunday morning to gather and worship and praise our Lord. And so that sometimes includes... Making noise, conversations, back and forths, enjoying our, the presence of each other and enjoying the presence of Christ our King. Because there's a lot to be excited about just to be in here, never mind everything else. So today though we're continuing our Fruit of the Spirit sermon series. Today is week five of course. As we begin, though, worship, please uh, stand. We're going to sing a song, that new song we sang last week together, and the choir sang a week before that. We're singing it one more time together this morning. I got a lot of positive feedback about it last week, so it sounds like people enjoyed the song, and you get to enjoy it once more this week before we get into Advent and a different song and different themes going for our songs in the next few weeks leading to Christmas. Uh, so we're going to sing the King of Love together, so please stand as you're able and join us in singing.
be seated. As we come into our uh, opening prayer, which will uh, be followed with the Lord's Prayer. So uh, please join me as appropriate. Let's pray. God, you are the good shepherd of our souls. The good shepherd, God, that leads us and guides us to streams of living water. Streams of your mercy and your grace, God, that are ever overflowing in our lives. That you offer to us freely, God. No, no ifs, no ands, no buts about it. No strings attached. This grace, this love, God, this patience that you continually give to us. May we show all of that, God, to one another. May we show all of that and more, God, to all of those we know and all of those that we run into. Everlasting patience, God. Everlasting goodness. Everlasting mercy and grace and love. Because, God, those are the things that you show us in Christ our Lord. In Jesus, God, a baby born in a manger, you show us unconditional love. <laughs> love that is patient and kind and willing and freely forgiving. May we show that love, God, all the time to one another. Even in those times and moments when it's tough and difficult. Even in those times and moments when we might question somebody's motives or the things that they say. Lord, may we see the good in one another, God, as you see the good in us. May we see Christ, God, in one another as Christ lives within us. In his life, God, and in his ministry, Jesus taught us so many things. And one of the things Jesus taught us was how to pray. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So in our, this is our, our time of a reminder of where we've been the last few weeks. In our first week, talking about the different fruits of the Spirit, we learned about gentleness. And we learned how gentleness is a little like a peach. Week two, we looked at self-control and how it kind of symbolizes a pomegranate. Week three was the fruit of goodness, how it is like an apple. Last week with week four, it was kindness. And a pineapple kind of helped us picture kindness. Today we look at the fruit of patience. You're going to have to practice some patience though this morning before we get to that part of the service because we have a few more elements that will happen before the sermon. So we're talking about patience and now you have to show some patience with me with these other aspects of the service because we're having communion this week. You can see the elements all there. But Something we want to do probably about two times a year is have communion with the children in the church present for that moment so that they hear the words that we say, so that they can experience the, the bread and the juice, but that's with the parents or the guardian's permission. So children from our standard, from your minister's standard, are welcome at the table. But parents or guardians, it is up to you to decide with your children if it is appropriate for them to be included in the meal. So I'm just putting that out there. I'll remind you of that as we get into that. But there's no pressure. There's no judgment here. But children are welcome to participate if the parents feel that they are allowed to participate from the parents' perspective. But from the church's perspective, from my perspective, they are. Uh, but we're going to sing a communion song before we get into that. And so uh, please stand as you're able and join us in singing uh, Let Us Break Bread Together.
And so as we continue this time of communion, this time of remembrance, I would remind you that this is not the table of these people or this specific church. It's not the table of the United Church of Canada and it is not the table of Riverside United Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior. This is the table of Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a member at Riverside to be welcome at this table. You don't even have to come here regularly. But if you seek to know and love and follow Christ in your life, you are welcome at this table because it is Christ's table and not ours. We are not the judges of who is welcome here. Only Christ can do that. Parents, again, if you decide your children are welcome, but if you decide that they're not, that is also okay. It is up to the parents and guardians to determine their children's readiness for this meal. <clears throat> Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of light, giver of all life and source of love. You, God, guide the world, you cradle the moon, you toss the stars, and at your word, God, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. You breathe, God, the breath of life into us and set us among your creation. Even when we turn away from God, God does not forsake us. God sent us prophets to proclaim his mercy and justice, to remind us of God's promises to lead us and to guide us and to walk with us and to call us back to him. God, you are the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. God, you are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We praise you, Lord, for what you revealed to us in Jesus. Jesus walks with us and is our wisdom and our way. Jesus shares with us in joy and sorrow. He heals the sick. He feeds the hungry. He sets the captives free. So today, Lord, we remember that when Jesus ate with his friends, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave thanks for it. He passed it around and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which has been given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. And then Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he passed it around to his friends. And he said, drink, for this cup <coughs> is the new promise of God, which is made in my blood. Whenever you drink from this cup, do so to remember me. And so we ask, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts before us, that all who share in the bread and the cup this morning may be the body of Christ now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. And the blood of Christ, poured out. For you. You'll be coming forward to be served this morning, so kind of up the middle aisle and then back around to where you're currently seated. If you can't come forward due to some physical reasons, um, there'll be somebody at the back just coming to ask you if you would like us to bring you communion, so just to make sure that if you want to be served, you can be served, whether you can come to the front or not. Um, our servers are already here, so as you come up, they'll hand you a piece of bread and then grab a piece of uh, a, um, a, cup, a little cup of juice and take the elements here and then return to your seats. So uh, I'll hand the, sir the elements out, but I'd invite you all to please uh, come for all things are now ready.
keeping my eyes on it. young at heart ministry so children and young at heart come on forward <laughs> come get your son she says <laughs> I'll get him in a second <laughs> let him crawl let him crawl <laughs> you can probably hold Micah yes but first I need I'm gonna have Lori and McKenna help me because they weren't here for a couple weeks we've got some plates at the back which we need to bring up can you two help me with that the offering plates that are back there so we'll go back there. There's one on either side of the sanctuary. You've got some one person standing over there. So there's one over there, McKenna, if you want to head that way. And Lori, go that way. And we'll bring our offering plates forward. Yep, that's it on the tables there. So bring them forward to the front for me. Just to show people that we give to our church and we're good stewards of all that God has given to us. And of course there's plates at the front here as well in these doors um, just as you come in. So all the doors have offering plates available to you um, that we may give back to God a little bit for all that God has given to us. So Jasper and Paisley already know this because they were with me when I bought these just this morning. So they're brand as new as they can get. And what do you guys think this is? What are these? Yeah? McKenna? They're Kiwis! We got a few Kiwis amongst the crowd this morning. One of my favorite fruits... And I've said before, I think, you can eat the skin, it's delicious. Don't eat the edges, but eat the skin. It's better than an apple skin and just like a peach skin. Both, though a little fuzzier than a peach. So today we're talking about the fruit of the patience, or the fruit of the spirit of patience. We're talking about patience today. And I thought in some of my research that a kiwi, would you like to hold one, honey? A kiwi would be a good mark of patience because of the tough, how hard they are to grow. And they take a very long time, I understand, and a lot of work to grow a kiwi. Because they grow on these vines, but they need a very special climate. You couldn't grow them in Canada very well unless it was in a greenhouse. And they take a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of patience to be able to grow kiwis so that you, they get good fruit off of their branches and not bad fruit. And so a kiwi represents patience because of all the hard work the farmer or the kiwi person has to put into that branch and that vine to create 
a good delicious kiwi although these ones aren't quite ripe because like I said I bought them today so they're a little hard so they won't be as soft as most kiwis but we've got a whole bin of them here there was six of them in this I think six one two three nope there are seven of them I lied there's seven kiwis here and they cost about a dollar each Kiwis, it, well, they cost six bucks, but it's, I'm going to say they were about 75 cents a piece. Um, and so we're going to be talking about patience today and how it's important to be patient with one another because God is always patient with us. So I'm going to say prayer, and, and Lori is going to be doing our reading before they head downstairs in just a moment. But I'm going to pray and thank God for all of you and all the families and our offering. And then we'll uh, have our scripture reading a little bit earlier than usual because we don't want the children to miss their Sunday school class. So let's pray. God, we thank you for the offerings that have been given here this morning, Lord. We thank you for the fruit of the kiwi and how, God, it helps us to see the fruit of patience in one another. And hopefully, God, that we are patient with one another in all times and in all places. And God, thank you for these children and the families that are present. God, may you bless them abundantly as they bless us with their presence. And so thank you, Lord, that they are here to worship with us and join with us on this wonderful Sunday morning. So we pray this, God, and so much more, all in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So Lori here is going to be reading our Galatians reading, chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. So Lori, I'll let you read, and then you guys can all head downstairs. Go ahead. But the Spirit produces the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There's no law that says these things are wrong. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, children, you can all head downstairs. I'll, uh, if you need some help with Micah there, bud, so you can stand up. Bring the kiwis downstairs with you, honey. Yeah. I get to carry you this time. You I can't guarantee they'll taste good because they're a little hard, but you can eat them if you want. And so now we will turn it over to the uh, choir, right? For the choir anthem. So, Margita and the choir.
Thank you, thank you, choir, so much for that. Always wonderful, always beautiful, always appropriate. <laughs> I've heard it said that patience is a virtue. Have you all heard that before? Patience is a virtue. If that is true, I don't know if I have my clicker up here this morning. Oh, there it is. We don't have to throw it today. If patience is a virtue, if that is true, I think many in our society seem to lack this virtue. More and more people, I think, are getting less and less patient. Have you seen that? Anybody else seen that in our world today, in our society today? Do you remember a day before the internet when you had to wait for things? You had to wait for your favorite TV show to come on. You couldn't just click a couple buttons and have it appear. For me, if I was sick home from school, I had to patiently wait to watch The Price is Right. <laughs> right? With Bob Barker at the time, but now Drew Carey. Still a great show. I still sometimes turn it on at 11 o'clock. But I had to wait. I couldn't just plug in a computer or turn on my internet access and, and Google Price is Right episodes and be able to watch it on any number of streaming services out there. I had to wait until 11 o'clock and that was the only time it was ever on. Now you sometimes have Price is Right at night which is fantastic, but my kids do not understand this aspect of waiting for the show that you like to come on. My kids do not understand the, that there was a day where you couldn't just watch what you wanted, when you wanted, at just a moment's notice. They've never experienced that because they've always had the internet and they've always had things like Disney Plus and Netflix and, and Hulu and, and Crave TV and, and all, like any number of streaming services, just to name a few. But I think that that stuff, like those services, the internet, these things that we can just have constantly on demand with no buffering, no issues, no waiting, I think, I hypothesize that that is part of the reason that our society is less and less patient. Because we don't have to wait for anything anymore. We don't like waiting for things generally speaking, but I think this is especially true when it comes to entertainment. We don't have to wait for much. We put on our favorite television program in a matter of seconds, just a few clicks. And it gets better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it, because you can watch all of this commercial free. You don't have to wait five minutes for those pesky commercials to end to get back to the program you really want to watch. And if your program has commercials, you can record it and then when those, watch it an hour after the fact and then skip all the commercials by fast forwarding to when the show comes back on. What used to take 60 minutes to watch now takes 45. Because we don't have to watch commercials if we don't want to. Talk about a lack of patience <laughs> happening in our day-to-day -day lives. Got bored of that show? Well, guess what? A couple clicks and you're on to the next one. You don't have to wait for it to be over. You don't have to wait for, like, anything. You know, well, I'm bored of this show. I'm going to go on to the next show. Price is Right isn't good anymore, so I'm going to go on to Let's Make a Deal or something. The next game show that I enjoy. These services that offer these scenes in just a few seconds, like, just as quickly as you snap your fingers in many cases, I think has resulted in a lot less patience in the world around us. Because there was a day where we were used to waiting for things. Fast food was a fairly new invention. drive throughs fairly new in the 80s and 90s, right? It was convenient and cheaper, but never as good as a sit-down restaurant. So if you're on a long trip, you'd go drive through fast food. But if you're at home, you'd probably go to the sit-down restaurant. And so you'd wait for your food more often than not, but now, like, fast food is faster than ever, though it's not necessarily cheaper than ever. It's just as much as sit-down restaurants in some cases, it seems, these days. We had to wait for those programs, though, that we enjoyed. Patience is a virtue, but I think we as a society are lacking that virtue more and more, and it's nobody's fault but our own. Because we've demanded the technology to be able to, to have the things that we have now. 
We've demanded the convenience from the people that like technological giants like Google and Netflix and, and Amazon. Like you don't even have to go to the store to shop anymore. Few clicks and you can have it delivered to your door the next day in most cases. We're not used to waiting for things and it's nobody's fault but our own. Our society is lacking patience because, well, they didn't grow up in a world, my kids especially, where they had to ever wait for anything. They don't have the tools or the ability to handle waiting for things anymore because they didn't grow up learning those things. Certainly not like most of you did and not even like I did and I grew up through like the 90s. Those were my formative childhood years. They were never taught patience to begin with. How can we expect them to have it when we've never given them the tools or the reasons to need it? A few weeks ago when I began this sermon series with the fruit of gentleness, I read a proverb which seems appropriate to read once again this morning from Proverbs chapter 25 verse 15 which says this, With patience you can convince a ruler and a gentle word can get through to the hard-headed. Anybody remember reading that a few weeks ago? About five weeks ago, I think it was. When we talked about gentleness, we focused on that second line, that a gentle word can get through to the hard-headed. This week, though, it's that first line that is more important. With patience, you can convince a ruler. Have you ever tried to convince somebody of something? Anything at all in your life? How's that ever worked out for you? If you didn't show them patience, probably not good, right? It probably didn't go over well. If you were to look back at yourself, you might, you would probably recognize that all the things you believe and do and practice today took you some convincing. Everything you do now that seems natural to you probably took some convincing from somebody somewhere along the way. And so that person or people, perhaps, showed you patience as you began, okay, I see what they're saying. Okay, yeah, I see how that would be appropriate. Now, it's easy to forget about those journeys in our lives because maybe you've been that way for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, so you don't remember the journey when you were 20 to 30 or 16 to 20 years old, figuring out life and, and the things you would be and who you are now. I can point to a time in my life, as young as about 12 years old, where I could tell you that God was calling me to be a minister. 12 years old, I could point to and say, yep, that was the, mo that was the first time the call of God was on my life. Now, of course, I didn't see that at the moment. My parents did, though. Close to a little over a decade and a half later, almost two decades later now, here I am, <laughs> a minister, <laughs> doing the thing God called me to at 12 years old, and I'm now 36. You know how much patience God had with me on that journey? <laughs> Somebody's like, a lot of patience. God had a lot of patience. The call to ministry began when I was about 12, and it took nearly 10 years before I finally realized that call, and first accepted that call and it took another five years after that before I actually went to school to figure out okay I need to get this education to be able to fulfill this call at least in the United Church of Canada. So it took about 15 years for that call as a 12 year old to come to some sort of fruition. God showed me patience to convince me of the path that I would eventually follow. Ten years of patience and then an, uh, probably 15 overall and probably 20 to 25 even still because I'm probably still messing it up. <laughs> I'm probably still not following it appropriately every day of my life. God showed me patience though to convince me of the path that I would eventually follow. My parents again saw that call early on in my life and they never shared that with me until after the fact and so they also showed a lot of patience seeing me my life and being a part of it as I was determined to do things my own way. And I'm sure you've had similar experiences where others knew something that you needed to do but you wanted to do it your own way. Somebody knew that you should do this. This is 
good advice, you should heed this advice. And you said, nope, I know better than all of you. I'm going to do it this way. The important people in your life hopefully show you patience in those moments <laughs> where you say, nope, I know better than you do and I'm going to do things my own way. And I hope when those tides are turned, you as well show others patience when you're trying to help them along their journeys of, of life, of faith, whatever that looks like. When you're trying to convince somebody to say, come to church with you, I hope you're patient with them because patience can convince a ruler, but it will also help convince your friends and family that, you know what, church isn't all that bad. I can take an hour out of my Sunday morning for that. Another proverb, though, from chapter 16, verse 32, says this, Patience is better than strength. Controlling your temper is better than capturing a city. Patience is better than strength. Anybody remember that Bible story, Joshua and the walls of Jericho? You guys, Sunday school, a few of you remember that story? It can be found towards the end of the book of Joshua, chapter 5, and also goes into chapter 6. I'll tell you the short version this morning. Joshua is told by God to march around the city of Jericho, which has these giant impenetrable walls, impossible to get through with an army. And so God tells Joshua, march around the city with all, your, all, your, all, of, all of your armed men once per day for six days. Do that with the trumpets and, and the priests and the Ark of the Covenant. Once per day for six days, Joshua would march his army around the city and none of the men would make a sound. They'd just march around the city with the trumpets. And then they'd return to camp. And on the seventh day, God told Joshua to march around the city seven times on the seventh day, blowing the trumpets, and on the last long trumpet blast, the whole army of Israel would give a loud shout. And when they did that, on the seventh day of marching around the city, the walls of Jericho would just simply collapse. They'd just cease to be. They'd just fall down. And so Joshua does that. He does all the marching for six days. On the seventh day, he does it seven times. And on the last time, the whole army offers this loud shout, this last, last hurrah, this huge noise. And the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. And so the city is taken by Joshua and his army. And the story there focuses on two things. One, obedience, but two, patience. Obey God's commands, you will get what you need, but also be patient because God's timing is different than our own. I would assume that Joshua would have much rather just stormed the city on day one. I don't want to have to do all this pesky marching for seven days. Like, that's a long time. I have to feed all the, these men, all this, this army. They're all asking me questions like, why are we marching and not doing anything? Why aren't we attacking this city and trying to take it over? Joshua practices patience, understanding that God's timing is different than our own. And so Joshua did what God said. And it would have required patience to do so, but what is patience? Our, uh, one definition of patience, and I think a game of chess is another good symbol of patience. You need patience to play chess, because it's a long game. <laughs> but, patience, one definition I found said this. Patience is the ability to endure delays, difficulties, or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Patience involves maintaining a calm and composed demeanor in the face of challenges. So the ability to endure delays, difficulties, or suffering without, without that's key, becoming annoyed or anxious. So if there's a delay and you become annoyed or anxious, you're not practicing patience, I don't think but you maintain a calm, composed demeanor and you face the challenges and you figure it out and so you have patience. But biblically speaking, patience isn't a passive waiting, I don't think. Biblically speaking, patience is an active endurance. Patience is an active thing you practice, not a passive thing you practice. And it forms from this deep trust in God's timing, in God's wisdom, which brings us to another passage from the Bible, from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, which says this. 
Paul writes to Timothy, What I say is true, and you should fully accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. That's Paul. But I was given mercy so that in me, the worst of all sinners, Christ Jesus could show that he has patience without limit. His patience with me made me an example for those who would believe in him and have life forever. So Paul writing to Timothy. Paul encourages Timothy firstly here to fully accept the things that Paul has taught him before. Paul calls himself the worst of all sinners. And in him, he says, Christ Jesus shows infinite patience. Patience without limit. The patience of God with Paul makes an example for all who would believe. Now I think all of us here could easily say, yeah, I lack patience sometimes. Maybe it was earlier today. Maybe it was last night. Maybe it was American Thanksgiving when the football game didn't go as planned for all you Lions fans out there. Maybe it's the car in front of you not going quickly enough when the light turns green. Anybody ever honk their horn at somebody that doesn't go quickly enough for you because you just want to get going? The light's been green for 10 seconds. Let's go, people. I know I'm guilty of that. Not today, but I've done it before. Maybe it's the understaffed restaurant that doesn't have the number of people necessary to get food out at, at a, in a good time frame quickly enough. Maybe it's a traffic jam. How often those happen? Due to construction or congestion or an accident of some kind. Remember, just like not even a year ago, I was driving on the 401 and traffic came to a complete standstill, all three lanes, because of an accident just a few hundred meters in front of where I currently was parked. I was forced there, just outside of Comber. And most of us drivers, because it took about two hours so before we got moving again. Most of the drivers, we got out of our cars and walked around and stretched our legs. It was sunny and nice out, so that was a good, good news for that. But nearly two hours, like, we talked to one another. And in those two hours, you know how many people I heard complain that they had to wait? And my only comment at the time was, you know what? I'd much rather be waiting here than in the accident just a few hundred meters ahead. Because I'm going to be reaching my destination. The person in that accident, though, didn't. I think they survived. I don't think there's any deaths in that accident. But I was delayed by two hours. They were delayed probably several days with what I assume was a hospital visit of some sort. I'd much rather be delayed for two hours than two weeks or two months or not at all. Because not everybody survives those accidents. And yet we get impatient because we have to wait a couple hours. Now, in that incident, I showed patience, but I could name many incidences where I didn't. And my wife's kind of smiling like, yep, she can think of a few too. <laughs> so although I practiced patience that day in that scenario, I could also share examples where I lacked patience. What I've come to learn, and I think this is really important for this place, for, for, for our church life and our faith life, patience is crucial in any relationship. But patience is especially crucial in any healthy relationship. Because there's a difference between having a relationship with somebody and having a healthy relationship with somebody. To have a healthy relationship really requires patience with one another. Because practicing patience with one another can help prevent those conflicts we talked a little bit about last week. Where we have to show kindness to one another. Having patience with one another can help prevent conflicts and misunderstandings. But patience can help us navigate those times when those difficulties inevitably arise. When those conflicts in our church life inevitably arise. Because they will. They always do. No matter what we do, conflicts will arise in not only our personal lives, but also in our church lives. Patience can go a long way in those moments. 
And so we conclude all that information about the fruit of the spirit of patience with the understanding that patience is a little like a kiwi. One of my favorite fruits, and, I, and I'm using a, a kiwi not because it's my favorite fruit, but because from what I've seen and researched about kiwis, they can take several years to harvest. You plant a kiwi seed and it will take several years for it to grow to maturity, to produce significant and good fruit. But kiwis require a very specific climate too. We couldn't grow them well here without a greenhouse. I couldn't grow it at my house. Kiwis require a very specific climate. And they grow very slowly too, I understand, and especially in their younger years. Kiwi plants take a long time to grow. And so growing them requires time and patience. But they require a lot of pruning as well. Very specific conditions. If you don't prune kiwi plants, then you're not going to get good fruit. They will not thrive. And so it takes patience and time to adjust to the environment and make it suitable for them if you're the grower. To encourage healthy fruit production, you must do a lot of pruning. And how true is that in all of our lives? If we just pruned a few branches, maybe we'd produce better fruit as well. More good fruit. More kind fruit. Fruit that is full of patience. So think about that this week. The next time you want to honk your horn at the driver in front of you or get impatient with the, the restaurant staff because your food's not coming quickly enough. Remember, they're doing their best. Practice a little patience. Practice a little patience here in this place as well. That we may all come to know the patience God has for us through one another. Because God's patience is eternal. It's everlasting. It's never ending. I hope we can have that same patience with one another. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, you have patience with us that is unlimited. Though we often fail God to have the same level of patience ourselves, we know, Lord, that this life of faith is a journey. And so we will make mistakes. And we will mess up. And we will lack patience at important times. And we will lack patience with those that we love and cherish. We will lack patience when others, God, simply are not understanding us or if we do not feel heard, or if we think somebody's trying to take advantage of us. So help us, Lord, to be more like Jesus and more like Joshua. Be able to have patience and understanding, God, that you have a plan for us and you, God, have a purpose for us. You, Lord, know what is best for us. Now oftentimes, God, your timeline does not line up with our own timelines because we like things now. We like things when we want them, not necessarily when we need them, though we like them when we need them as well. Our societal structures, God, have not helped that lack of patience, Lord, because we can get everything we could ever want on demand, but you, God, know what we need. So send us, God, your Holy Spirit this morning and in all moments of our lives that we may act more often with patience towards one another and that, God, we will also wait patiently for your plan for us to come to fruition, whatever that looks like. May we follow that path for our lives, God. Even though you'll be patient with us, may we recognize the path and follow it so that you don't need as much patience with us. We lift up in prayer, God, all those who are sick and hurting, all those in hospitals and long-term care homes. We pray especially for Christine, for Gail, for Linda, for John, for Jeff, for Eleonora, and for Sabina. May you grant them mercy and love, God. May they know that we are reaching out to them, God, that we love them, that a community of people is praying for them, that they may know your love and mercy, God, as we know your love and mercy in every moment of every hour of every day. And we pray all this, God, and so much more in the name of Christ our Lord. And everybody said, 
Amen. So we're going to sing one more song as we come to conclusion this morning from our Voices United hymn book. It's Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. So uh, please join us in singing. usual our email list and prayer list is always open if you need to be added to either one or know somebody that does please let the office know our faith talk continues on Tuesday mornings down in the dresser room as we continue to talk about Paul and Saul the same person um, any other announcements from the community this morning oh waving yes we, I forgot to wave for a couple of weeks so I'm getting the wave so if you want to turn around and pan the camera and wave to all those watching us online and joining us from a distance whether it's right in this moment in time or later on this week we say hi to all of our online viewers as well and welcome them to worship as well so any announcements or news anything that I missed yes Laurie White Gift Sunday next week. Oh, yes. Congrats to Dave McGuffin on the uh, induction into the, the, the Sports Hall of Fame, I think it was. I think there's an article in the Riverside, our Riverside magazine about that that I saw. So congrats to him on that. Um, White Gift Sunday, yes, next week. So if you want to bring in some food donations, we'll, I think we'll bring, be bringing them to the uh, downtown Mission Food Bank. And we're going to have the kids at the Sunday school time bring the food up here, similar to the offering. So just bring it in if you can and l leave it in your pews with you. And we'll collect it from you next week and make sure it gets to the right spot. So White Gift Sunday next week. Tom, did you have something? Unwrapped. Yeah, don't, you don't actually have to wrap it. That's a waste of paper in today's world, and they unwrap it anyways. So just keep it as, as a non-perishable food item, and uh, we'll bring them forward. And um, yeah, we call it White Gift Sunday because we used to wrap that stuff in white paper, but they're asking the church not to do that just so we know what it is and the food bank knows what it is as well so they can distribute it appropriately. Uh, anything else? Anything else? hearing and seeing nothing. Thank you all for those updates and help. Uh, it's been wonderful to be able to connect with all of you and worship with all of you this morning. And I do hope you go from this time of worship wherever you might be, knowing that we in the church love you, knowing that God loves you. So go and serve others. Mm -hmm.